This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, through you, thank you to our witnesses uh, for joining us uh, today. Um, I want to begin, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, we know that from past presentations that there are uh, robust sharing agreements in place between uh, corporate security offices and, and certain uh, law enforcement offices. Um, I'm curious whether similar uh, sharing exists with uh, security intelligence, so sp specifically uh, CSIS, whether there's any sharing, sharing of information between House Security with CSIS. Uh, there is, but perhaps we could ask the Sergeant Arms maybe to come to the table and give a bit more detail. And I don't know to what degree that's possible, uh, given sensitivity of, of the question. And I, and I did joke earlier that uh, Mr. McDonnell uh, wasn't with us at the table, so now he's uh, he's joining us. Good morning, and thank you for the question. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, yes, there is an agreement in place with CSIS. Thank you. And and was the now famous Chong memo from July 2021 ever shared with the House of Commons? Um, recently, yes. Recently, but not in July of 2021. No. Thank you for that. Uh, would more information sharing improve your job if uh, you were to receive more regular information sharing from intelligence agencies? We've recently signed a uh, memorandum of understanding with CSIS and ITAC, and yes, it's improving daily. Thank you for that, Mr. McNeil. Um, I want to move on. Uh, this summer, uh, Parliament will be hosting the uh, annual session of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, of which both Russia and Belarus are members. Um, I'm curious whether any Canadian tax dollars will be used to roll out the red carpet, so to speak, for Russia and Belarus this summer. Uh, there, there's obviously funding that's been made available to host a conference in general. It's not earmarked for specific countries, specific delegations. Uh, I guess the, the challenge for all delegates participating in any conference in Canada is whether they can receive those countries that have a requirement to receive a visa to enter Canada to participate in said conference. Provided that uh, the current government provides visas to the representatives from Belarus and Russia, they will be attending. That would be my understanding. Yes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jantz. I, be I believe we'd have to ask, have to have the uh, Minister of Immigration in to uh, answer that question. <laughs> thank you for that, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I want to follow up. Uh, currently, obviously, we are between. Permanent clerks, currently where you have the wonderful services of our acting clerk, uh, Mr. Jantz. Um, one of the challenges we had with the appointment of the previous uh, permanent clerk, um, the then House leader failed to consult with the then speaker about that appointment and also with the opposition parties. Um, so I'm curious, Mr. Speaker, from your current experience, whether the government has consulted you yet on the permanent um, process to replace the clerk? I know there's been talk of, uh, of uh, putting the process in place, but no, there hasn't been anything uh, that I'm aware of, or there's been no consultation as of yet on the uh, actual replacement. Uh, uh, Mr. Jansi is doing an excellent job, and uh, I really can't... Uh, uh, there's, there's <laughs> I, 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 my understanding in speaking to the government house leader is that they are putting thought into it and uh, they want to come up with a process that is transparent and will function well. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more information on that. And, and I would just follow up on that. Would you expect that uh, opposition parties and yourself as speaker be consulted as part of that process? I mean, I can tell you what I'd like, but I can't tell you, uh, yes, I would like uh, everyone to be uh, consulted. Again, uh, the, the more transparent it is, uh, I think the more acceptable it becomes a process of. 
Appreciate that for sure. Uh, following up then, uh, we also have an acting, uh, we do not uh, currently have a permanent law clerk. Uh, we haven't had for, for almost a year, uh, given where we are right now with a minority parliament, uh, given the fact that we have had a significant question of privilege um, come before us. I'm curious both Mr. Speaker and uh, Mr. Jantz, uh, what engagement you may have had thus far from the government on the appointment of a permanent uh, law clerk? From what I understand, uh, the process is being looked at, but again, it hasn't been uh, put into place. Uh, I uh, would hope that we have a permanent position in place, uh, hopefully as soon as possible, and uh, we'll see where that goes as well. Uh, Maybe I can just add that I've had a couple of meetings with a PCO uh, on the uh, process to select a next law clerk, so it, it should be rolling out uh, Soon. Sorry, could you just repeat, repeat that last 10 I, seconds? I, I said it should be rolling out soon, the process to uh, select a, a permanent law clerk. No, th thank you for that. Uh, final question I want to follow up on is uh, the uh, recently approved three-year strategic plan for House administration. Um, when it was brought before the Board of Internal Economy, uh, the impartiality had been dropped from the expressed values of the House administration. I understand that's been re-added uh, back in. Given the challenges that we face with the, the, the former clerk and uh, regrettable uh, alle allegations, I'll, uh, I'll leave that for that to be responded to in the second round. Uh, in answer to a question posed by uh, Mr. Nader, Mr. McDonnell, through you, Madam Chair, uh, you stated that the July 20th, 2021 intelligence assessment concerning Member of Parliament Michael Chong being targeted by an accredited Beijing diplomat at the Toronto Consulate was recently shared with the House of Commons. Does, that, do, does any witness have any insight why that was only recently shared with the House of Commons and not shared back in July of 2021? Through you, Madam Chair, uh, we didn't have an agreement in place with uh, CSIS at that time for the sharing of intelligence, us with them or them with us, and we're a non-government uh, department, so it uh, created uh, uh, somewhat of a challenge before that MOU was signed. And that agreement uh, came into effect when? 30th of March this year. Of this year. Thank you for that. And... Uh, has any information uh, from CSIS or any other intelligence agency uh, been provided to the uh, information provided to the House of Commons that would indicate that any other members of Parliament are being targeted by Beijing or any other hostile foreign state? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. And can you elaborate on? The number again. I'm not asking you to name the individual members, but can you provide a number? Through you, Madam Chair. No. And why is it that you cannot provide a number? Because the information was given to us in in confidence by CSIS under the terms and agreements of the MOU. I'm not at liberty to uh, disclose that information at this time. Okay, and. Uh, is there a protocol in place to inform members of Parliament when the House of Commons receives this information from CSIS? Through you, uh, Madam Chair, it is my understanding that CSIS will be providing that information to any MP uh, that is targeted by a foreign government. So there is no protocol in place, is your answer? For you, Madam Chair, there is a protocol in place now under the terms of the Memorandum of Understanding to advise my office who is being targeted uh, by a foreign government. However, uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, CSIS is the lead agency. Thank you for that. And when CSIS advises your office pursuant to the protocol, what do you do with that information? That information is um, a file is, is generated 
and then we will um, take the appropriate uh, investigative uh, measures and techniques to um, monitor uh, the safety and security of the uh, said member. And as far as informing the said member, that would, just for clarification, that pursuant to the protocol, it would not be your office or the speaker's office that would undertake that. Am I correct in my understanding? For you, Madam Chair, that is correct. Uh, Mr. McDonnell, you indicated that the memorandum of understanding between the House of Commons and CSIS was signed on March 30th of this year. Has the memorandum of understanding and any protocol pursuant to that memorandum of understanding been updated since May the 1st? Review, uh, Madam Chair. No, 